Alright, so now we're going to do more with zeros of polynomial functions. We've done all of this before. We have found zeros of functions. We found real zeros, we found non-real zeros. We focused on the real zeros, but we also found the non-real zeros. So what we're going to do here is nothing new. The only thing new we're going to learn, which you've done before, is the possible rational zeros of a polynomial. First, let's refresh our memories on what are zeros. So I want you to look in your packet right above the first example and look at the definition of zeros. Zeros are also called roots, x-intercepts. They are only x-intercepts if they're real zeros. Solutions to a function. How do we find the zeros? We set the function equal to zero and solve for x because that's how we find x-intercepts. So those are things we're going to want to keep in mind. All right, find all of the zeros of the polynomial. You should know how to do this. Go. Pause the video. Unpause when you're ready to check your work. All right, so we should end up with x equals negative 3 and x equals plus or minus 3i as the zeros. How did we get that? Well, again, you have done this before, so that's why we didn't do an example together. I expect you to be able to do this. Set the function equal to 0. Solve for x. I can factor this. That's why I can do this. So, factor by grouping. I can take out an x squared from the first group, a 9 from the second group. I've done that correctly. I get x squared plus 9 and x plus 3. Set each factor equal to 0. I get x squared equals negative 9. x equals negative 3. That's one of my zeros. Bam. Take the square root of both sides. That's negative, so it's going to give me imaginary solution. So I get x equals plus or minus 3i. So I have 3i, negative 3i, and negative 3 as all of my zeros. This one is the only one that is a real zero. That doesn't matter in this case because all I wanted was all of the zeros. But if I wanted real zeros, aka x-intercepts, negative 3 is the only real zero or x-intercept. How else can I check this, though? because this is going to be a big part. Calculator. We're going to want to be comfortable using our calculator here. So, I put the function into my calculator as y1. I do zoom 6, which is zoom standard. That resets my window, and I see this part of the graph. Okay, great. Well, looks like that's probably negative 3. Um, I can go to my table, and I have my table on ask, so I can type in negative 3, and I see that's a 0. Um, if my table is on auto, then if I go to my table, I can also see the negative 3 is a 0. If I don't see it on the table, or maybe it's not a nice number, I can do second trace, and I can do find zeros. So remember, we did this first semester. So there's second choice here. So I want to do a left bound. So I pick a number, that I know, an x value, that I know for sure is to the left of this. So I can see negative 4 is to the left of that. I get a little bound there. Now I pick a number that I know for sure is to the right of this. I can see that negative 2 is definitely to the right. I hit enter. So I see my bounds. My 0 is somewhere in between those. I don't care about the guess. So I hit enter again, and I get negative 3, 0. So that is one thing we are going to need to know how to do. So that's what we are practicing right there again. Those are my zeros. Okay, now we're going to talk about another fun test. Before we do that, we want to refresh ourselves on rational numbers versus irrational numbers because the test that we're going to do is for rational zeros. So it's important that we understand a rational number. Again, on your packet, I conveniently put for you what a rational number is, any number that can be written as the ratio, ratio means fraction, of two integers. So I want you to take 30 seconds, pause the video, write down some rational numbers. I also want you to write down some irrational numbers just to make sure you have an understanding of the difference. Pause the video and do that now. Okay, so here are some examples of rational numbers that I came up with. 0 is a rational number. Negative 2, positive 1, 0.25, negative 7 ninths, whatever this is. Uh, another good one that sometimes we confuse is, for example, 1 third. So that is a infinite decimal, but it's a repeating infinite decimal. So it's okay. Irrational numbers. Square root of 5. Negative square root of 2. Notice that I did not write square root of negative 2. That is different. E. Pi. Root 17 over root 3. 
Anything that is a non-repeating infinite decimal is irrational. E, if you don't remember, that's another constant like pi. Uh, it has to do with natural logs and exponential growth and exponential decay. Okay, so now hopefully we have an understanding of rational. Again, a word that we have been using since the very first day of school when I said it's important that you know this word. So now we're going to look at our rational zero test. First, what does this test for? It will find all of the possible rational zeros. This is different than the how many possible real zeros. Remember, the possible real zeros was just the degree, and that was the, that was a quantity. This is actually finding the possible values for all of the possible rational zeros. It doesn't mean you're going to have rational zeros, but what it means is if you do have rational zeros, they have to be one of these values. What are the possible values? They are the factors of the constant term divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. What the heck does that mean, right? Well, if I look at this polynomial function here, that's the constant term. Why is it the constant term? Because it doesn't have a variable with it. Makes sense. That's the leading coefficient. So what are all of the factors of 12? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. So plus or minus 1, because negative 1 is also a factor of 12, if 1 is a factor. Plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12, divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 5. So all of the possible rational zeros, which are also real zeros then, again, that's not the important part here, the possible rational zeros are every combination of these numbers. So 1 over 1, 1 over negative 1, negative 1 over 1, 1 over 5, negative 1 over 5, 2 over 1, 2 over negative 5, 3 over 1, 3 over 5, 4 over 1, 4 over 5, 6 over 1, 6 over 5, 12 over 1, and 12 over 5, all of the plus and minus combinations of all of those. I don't want you to write that out. That's a waste of time. I just want you to be able to write it like this so you understand what the possibilities are. Okay, so why do we care? Well, that's a really good question. And I know that's a question that you ask a lot. And most of the time I give you an answer about, well, it's more about the thought process um, or it's going to help you out uh, later on in math, which are true and those are good answers. In this case, I'm going to be honest with you, we don't care that much. Um, this was a very, very useful thing before the graphing calculator. Now that we have graphing calculators, the graphing calculator can do the work for us. However, it can still be helpful uh, when finding zeros. So why do we care? Well, it is helpful when finding zeros. Um, it's very minimally helpful in this case because of the graphing calculator, but Maybe a more straightforward answer is, well, you care because it's pretty easy points on a test or a quiz. You know, if I ask you, list all of the possible rational zeros, all you have to do is this. So, make sure you know how to get that problem correct on a test or a quiz. Okay. So, here, now let's actually find all of the zeros. So, in the previous page, we listed all the possible rationals. Now, we're going to find them. So here's where we're going to go straight to the calculator. So get your calculator out and put this into y1. Okay, so I have the function into my calculator. Again, I'm going to do zoom standard. And I see my graph. Okay, so I can see I have a couple of zeros. It's kind of hard to tell exactly how many. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. 
So I'm going to change my window instead of tens and negative tens. I'm going to do negative four to four because that looked as if it would work. And I'm going to do negative three to three. Now let's look at our graph. Okay, so I can see I have, it looks like two here and two here. So I'm going to start using my calculator to find these. Zero. I'm going to start with this one first. So left bound, negative two. Right bound, this is going to be harder to type in, so I'm actually going to use the arrows here. Okay, so I can see the cursor is right there. It is to the right of that. So I'm going to hit enter. Guess doesn't matter. So I hit enter. And I get negative 1.414214. All right, I'm not sure what that is. Here's the dilemma. Is that a rational number or is that an irrational number? If you know your irrational numbers pretty well, maybe you'll be able to recognize some of them. If you don't, though, now you want to ask yourself, okay, let's go back here and let's look at these possible rationals. Well, that number was, let's just say it's approximately like 1.5. I know it's not that. What are the possible values that could come out to be that? Well, 1, 2, 3, and 4 divided by 5 are all going to be something less than 1. So 6 over 5 is going to be a little bit more than 1. In fact, it's exactly 1.2. 12 over 5 is more than 2. So therefore, what I can do by looking at these values is I can tell this number here is not a rational number because it is not one of my possible values. My only possible values that could come out to be something close to one point, to negative 1.4 would be the 6 and the 5. So 6 divided by 5, but that is not 1.4 something, that is 1.2. Therefore, I'm going to ignore this for right now, and I'm going to move on to this one. So let's do second trace, zero again. So now, for my left bound, I'm going to use the cursor and put it right there, hit enter. For my right bound, I'm going to pick zero, because that is clearly to the right, hit enter. Guess doesn't matter, and I get negative one. Good. So now, I can come down here and I know that x equals negative 1 is a 0. So from here I could start to do synthetic division. I want to go ahead and see if I can find another 0 though with the calculator. So I'm going to do second trace, 0. I'm going to do 1 as my left bound. And now I'm going to do the cursor again and it's below, so that's my right bound, hit enter, and I get 1.2. I know for sure that's a rational number. So that is 6 fifths. So I also know x equals positive 6 over 5. Now I know the other root that I saw on the calculator, this other one that I didn't find yet, that also has to be irrational. I'll explain how I know that after we finish the problem, if you're not sure. Okay, so now what can we do? Now we can do synthetic division. So I want you to go ahead and do synthetic division, first with negative 1, then take your result and do synthetic division with the 6 fifths. So pause the video and do that. Unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay. So I started with negative 1, did my synthetic division, and I end up with this quotient. Because I already know 6 fifths is also a 0, I can just use these coefficients and start the synthetic division again. It's only because I got a remainder of 0 that I can do this. It also did not matter the order in which I did this. I could have started with the 6 fifths and then done the negative 1. It doesn't matter, but since negative 1 is easier to work with, I chose to do that one first. Now, because I did synthetic division twice, my quotient drops two degrees. So I want you to go ahead and find the remaining zeros, and then we're going to talk about that on part two. So this is the end of part one. Find the remaining zeros, though, and then go to part two.